Hi everyone and welcome to Lines in Sand. Today I want to address a number of very interesting points that have come to light since I published a video about a month previous to this one, which attempted to do a deep dive on the Orion Correlation Theory, more commonly referred to as the Star Shaft Theory. The video analysed the work of Robin Bovall and Adrian Gilbert before presenting arguments against their theory by other experts and figures in the field. I would strongly suggest watching that video before this one if you have not done so, as this video acts as an extension or a follow-up to what was presented there. I have no further work to present from Bouval's theory, but I did have a lot of excellent comments from people who took the time to watch my video. Some of these comments raised some excellent points, and there are points which I will address and expand upon today. Furthermore, in a happy coincidence, if you could call it that, a few weeks ago I finished reading Graham Hancock's Magicians of the Gods. The overwhelming majority of that work has no relation to anything I cover on this channel, but my attention was grabbed when at around 150 pages into his book, Hancock not only brings up Bouval's work in the form of the Orion Mystery, but also the criticisms of said work put forward by Ed Krupp, the director of the Griffith Observatory in Los Angeles. Ed Krupp's evidence against the Orion Correlation Theory made up a large chunk of the final portion of my last video on the subject, so today I would like to take a deeper look at what Graham Hancock, of all people, offers as a counterargument against Krupp's own counterargument to Robert Bouval's Giza ground plan map correlating with the constellation of Orion. I think this correlation, especially considering the map was purposefully and de deceitfully turned upside down to fit the theory, is pretty thin on the ground, so I was very interested about what Graham Hancock, a man that, regardless of whatever you think of him, is very, very sure of himself and his arguments, I was interested in what he had to say on the whole subject. I understand this video may not be everyone's cup of tea, even just addressing this material, even if I absolutely do not agree with him, is enough to turn some people off, so just a disclaimer in advance here for the inclusion of quotations from Mr. Hancock. I know a lot of you feel rather strongly about this, so it was definitely worth mentioning. I won't be offended if you tune out. On top of this, as I said, I want to also address some of the thoughtful ideas and comments left on the original Starshaft Theory video, so without further ado, let's get stuck in. Let's start then with this comment from Hal YN3ZJ. They write, You say that this guy says he thinks north is north and south is south, but as you must know, in ancient Egypt it wasn't. Southern Egypt was Upper Egypt and Northern Egypt was Lower Egypt. Egyptians viewed the Nile as the Milky Way, and so since they can't move the Nile, they had to move where the pyramid slash Orion was to make it match up correctly. This is an excellent point, and not something that I considered when it came to the Orion correlation theory map being upside down. However, now that I have thought on this a bit more, this falls under one of the counter-arguments that Ed Krupp mentioned as frequently coming up. What if the Egyptians had a reason to place the map upside down? Upper Egypt being in the south, and Lower Egypt being in the north, on paper at least seems like a good idea in regards to pyramid placement, right? However, as another commenter, Christian Vegastrom, apologies if I've butchered your name, as they pointed out, this is no bearing on the fact that the map is still upside down. If you flip the pyramids to fit Orion's belt, you flip Lower Egypt to the south and Upper Egypt to the north, now being the wrong way around. And this can have no bearing on the positioning of the pyramids because, well, Upper Egypt and Lower Egypt aren't laid out in this way in reality. The pyramids are where they are. The constellations of the stars are where they are. We can't flip them around in reality. Besides, north doesn't necessarily correlate with up, nor does south with down. On top of this, another one of Krupp's points still stands in this regard, flipping the map around so that the Giza plateau fits the stars of Orion kills the second part of the theory, that being the star shafts within the Great Pyramid. If the pyramids are flipped on the map, then the shafts don't point to where Bouval says they should point. Both parts of the theory end up contradicting the other, 
which isn't great. YouTuber Anko6 left a series of detailed comments, raising a lot of different points, but there are two that I want to point out here. Regarding the star maps of the ancient Egyptians, Anko6 writes, To my knowledge, the earliest Egyptian maps of the sky are really hard to interpret unequivocally even by these specialists. I'm assuming you're referring to the astronomical ceiling of Senemet's tomb, and clearly at least in part artistic depictions. And regarding the brightness of the stars in Orion's belt not matching the sizes of the pyramids on the ground, they write, Finally, the argument about the magnitude of the stars is again reasonable, but two counterpoints. First, the apparent magnitude of stars is hard to guess and prone to changes over time. The first catalogue for the apparent magnitude of stars, the Almagest, indeed suggests that the brightness of the stars changed over time, and until the modern era measurements were somewhat subjective, anyway. Also, brightness may have mattered less to ancient Egyptians than other characteristics such as physical or symbolical. These are two excellent points that I did not consider when writing the script for the Star Shaft video, so are definitely worth highlighting here as I've done. The brightness of stars can indeed change over time, even annually, and this is something I did not take into account at all when writing my criticism of Beauval's theory, so thank you very much indeed to this YouTuber for pointing that out. Commenter Dieb Merkel, <laughs> apologies if I've butchered your name there, they wrote, I still don't understand how the night sky image was superimposed wrongly, as you have said flipped or rotated. I'm a bit disappointed about the lack of visual representation here. There are lots of ways to flip an image of the night sky, or rather a map of the star ratio correlations, in order to be used in an architectural plan, and some even make sense, especially if they mark the afterlife and the other world. If anything, a flipped image makes conceptual, esoteric sense in this context. Now there's a lot to unpack here, but Regarding the visual representation, here, here are the pyramids of Giza, as they look in real life, with north and south being the right way around, and here now superimposed on top of that is the famous Giza slash Orion picture that we have been talking about. I appreciate what's been said here, but once again, if this representation of Giza and Orion matching up does work, then the star shaft element of the theory is once again thrown out the window, as with the pyramids flipped, their alignments no longer work. Therefore, the theory does not work. We are forever in this catch-22, even if a flipped image does make any esoteric sense in any way that you can imagine. Another thing to consider is that Orion looks different in the sky, from different parts of the world, times of year, so on and so forth. So perhaps there have been times where the pyramids and Orion do better match. However, there is no given scale for this correlation. A further appendix to Beauval's theory at the end of his book is the pyramids acting as a star clock for Orion. Now, this goes deep with a lot of figures and calculations presented to back it up. So much so, in fact, I think really getting into it is actually outside of the scope of this video. I will drop a link in the description if anyone is interested, but I still don't see how this has any bearing on whether the map is flipped upside down or not. There is no further evidence here in the star clock uh, appendix as to why the map needed to be changed around. If Giza and Orion do correlate, then I think the correlation is an artistic, as this user says, or should I say esoteric representation of that link to signify the importance of that connection to the stars rather than one that can be correlated with hard data. By admitting that, I'm coming dangerously close to sounding like a certain Mr. Hancock, which isn't what I was going for, so let's move on then to Graham Hancock. In Magicians of the Gods, Hancock writes the following. After Robert Beauval presented the Orion correlation to a global readership in his 1994 book The Orion Mystery, and after the further work I did on the subject in Fingerprints of the Gods, and that Robert and I did together in Keeper of Genesis, the hypothesis came in for a great deal of criticism from the mainstream archaeoastronomer Ed Krupp of the Griffith Observatory of Los Angeles. Okay, so this we know, 
We covered Krupp's arguments in detail in the previous Starshaft video. Hancock continues with the following. Krupp claimed that the correlation was upside down, an argument of some sophistry based on the apparent curvature of the sky, which means that the highest of the three stars of Orion's belt, matched in the Orion correlation by the southernmost of the three pyramids, is effectively the northernmost star. Refuting this, we were able to demonstrate that laying the pyramids out on the ground in the way that would satisfy Krupp might be technically correct in terms of modern astronomical conventions, but would not produce an immediately recognisable and visually pleasing similitude between what is seen in the sky and what is seen on the ground. If, on the other hand, one steers clear of 21st century astronomical conventions in which north is up and one simply models on the ground, rather as an artist or sculptor would, what would have been seen in the sky at dawn on the spring equinox in the epoch of 10,500 BC, then the result is indeed a very good match, as Robert Bovall always claimed between the three great pyramids and the three stars of Orion's belt. See appendix. The Orion correlation is not upside down for further details. Now, I've got to give it to Graham Hancock. I do like the man and I do enjoy his books and his videos, like when he appears on Joe Rogan with Randall Carlson and the like. And whilst I don't agree with a lot of what he says, I do find him thoroughly entertaining. But my god, is he good at baffling you into thinking he's right by using lots of big words. He is, where all credit is due, an excellent writer. But let's actually break apart what he is saying here. He makes it sound as if Ed Krupp and people like him are stuck in some narrow-minded interpretation of the stars by being bound to their, quote, modern astronomical conventions, end quote, as if the leaps and bounds made in discoveries and technological capabilities is some sort of bad thing. No, what Hancock is saying through all the baffle and bullishness and excellent literary prose is, well, stuff Ed Crap, we want to interpret the Geezer and Orion correlation this way, let me just dig out my Theosaurus and pull together a huge paragraph of fancy words to make Bouval seem like the one who is in the right, and Ed Crap is just some stuffy old coot bound by modern science and 21st century astronomical conventions and cannot see the bigger picture. I mean, come on, Hancock even admits that Krupp is, quote, technically correct. And to quote Futurama, you know, that's the best kind of correct, is it not? If Krupp is technically correct, then, well, that's it, right? It's worth noting, however, that there is once again no mention that the fact that turning all the maps upside down totally negates the second half of Boval's theory, that being the star shafts of the Great Pyramid. They do not make any sense if the map is upside down. I feel like I'm really starting to harp on this point, but the fact that it keeps going unaddressed when it's such a fatal contradictory flaw in the whole theory is a bit frustrating. At the very end of this passage of his book, Hancock points to his appendix entitled, The Orion Correlation is Not Upside Down. So flicking forward a couple of hundred pages to the end of Magicians of the Gods, we can see what else Graham Hancock has to say about the correlation theory. Now, you'll be no doubt interested to find that, well, this short appendix says absolutely nothing new, once again with lots of words and a very silly diagram. I'll quote some of Hancock's words here once more before showing the diagram in question. The objection of astronomers such as Ed Krupp is based on their modern convention that the sky is a curved dome overhead. If you view the sky that way, then the highest star, which is represented by Menkari's pyramid, according to the Orion correlation, is in fact the northernmost star, and the lowest star, which is represented by the Great Pyramid, according to the Orion correlation, is in fact the southernmost star. But on the ground, the Great Pyramid is the northernmost star pyramid, and the pyramid of Menkare is the southernmost pyramid. Hence, Dr. Krupp argues that the correlation is upside down. What the diagram demonstrates is that this is only correct according to the astronomical convention of the sky being the inside of a sphere that curves overhead. If we look at it simply as an artistic project, make a painting of the three stars of Orion's belt, and then lay that painting down in the most natural way on the ground in front of us, 
we will find that it does match slash correlate exactly with the positions of the three pyramids on the ground. Okay, so to support these words, this is the diagram that Graham Hancock chose to include in his appendix on this matter. Now, it is interesting that the words, quote, lay the painting down in the most natural way on the ground, end quote, are used. What exactly makes this the most natural way? Let's presume Hancock is right, and this painter, the designer of this correlation, who does not exist, might I add, the correlation of Giza and Orion's belt was made by Robert Bovall, not some ancient stargazer, let's presume this metaphorical artist did have to stand to the north of the pyramids looking south to see the pyramids in such a way that lined up with Orion's belt in the sky as shown in the diagram. But, and it's a big but, wouldn't the correlation of the pyramids and of the Orion's belt stars have been decided before they were built? Why is this so-called artist making this connection after the fact? The pyramids are already standing. If the pyramids at Giza need to be upside down for a lack of a better term in order to correlate with the stars, then why weren't they built in such a configuration in the first place? Why would the ancient Egyptians build the pyramids in the opposite way as was required for any correlation with Orion to actually work? It's all well and good to point out that an artist standing in a particular place at a particular angle, at a particular time, would see the pyramids and Orion correlate in such a way. But this is, well, a pointless endeavour. There is still no convincing evidence as to why the star map is upside down <laughs> compared to the real-life configuration and layout of the pyramids on the ground. Once again, if their correlation with Orion as per the diagram was that important, then surely the original proposed unified ground plan for Giza would have the pyramids constructed to meet that correlation, and we wouldn't be doing all of these literary and graphical gymnastics to make the constructions fit with the patterns in the sky. And once again, this does not address the fact that these star shafts are completely disregarded, never mind the tenuous links made to other pyramids at other sites on the stars. They too would all be flipped out of whack and no consideration is once again given to this. I am more than happy to change my mind on any form of correlation between Orion and Giza, but for now I think I've flogged this theory to death. I am then firmly in the camp that the Orion correlation theory and star shaft theory, whilst interesting, does not hold any water. It was interesting to see what Graham Hancock said on the matter, and the interesting comments watchers of this video made on YouTube are also great. There were, of course, some comments that I did not repeat here, either because I couldn't really add anything to what they proposed, or because they were perhaps too long to include in full, but I just want to say thank you to everyone who reaches out and takes part in the conversation. Likewise, to those of you who reach out with much more detailed proposals via email too, I appreciate all of the effort and interest in these subjects. Learning and discovery never ends, so once more, if you feel I have missed something in my analysis of the star-related theories, please do reach out, but for now, we will move on to more earthly subjects in the coming videos. Thanks once again for watching and for your ongoing support. If you enjoyed this content and you are not subscribed to the channel, please consider doing so. Your support really does help and I appreciate it endlessly. So, that's it for now, folks. Take care out there and I'll catch you in the next video. All the best.